Information warfare is a core pillar of MechWarrior Online. To boil it down to simple terms, it is the metagame of supplying you and your team with as much information as possible on the enemy's location and condition while trying to prevent the enemy from doing the same. There is some great implementation of this in the game currently. For example, UAVs. They offer tremendous positional information while also allowing counterplay, with the enemy team being able to spot them and shoot them down if they are observant. However, I believe some aspects of information warfare have problems and could be implemented much better. These are my thoughts on the problems with the current system and what I would change. Note that any examples using placeholder values could be changed based on balance preferences. To start off, let's look at the basic targeting of an enemy mech. All mechs show up on sensors with a direct line of sight at 800 meters, unless modified by ECM or sensor range boosting items such as Begalactic Probe. It doesn't matter if the mech is a 100 ton Atlas or a 20 ton Locust, everyone is spotted at the same distance away. This is the first issue. The fact that all mechs, regardless of size and profile, are treated the same in terms of targeting range. This doesn't seem fair to smaller mechs, and is not very realistic. I know this is a game about giant stoppy space mechs, but bear with me. Say the Atlas from our example shows up on radar at 1 km away. The mech is giving off enough signal or is large enough for our sensor system to go over the threshold of a positive contact. If there was a 20 ton locust standing beside the Atlas, we would expect that it wouldn't trigger our sensors, as it is only one fifth of the size. In order for that locust to equal the amount of presence that the Atlas has at one kilometer, it would have to be much closer. We could do this using the concept of angular size. Here's a basic explanation. It's the idea that an object in the distance will take up a specific angle of your field of view based on its size. As the object gets closer, it will become larger, and as it moves away, it becomes smaller. This way, two objects of different sizes can appear to be the same size. The smaller one is much closer than the larger one. Back to our example, with the atlas sitting at one kilometer away, the locust moves forward until it is the same angular size as the atlas, and appears to be the same physical size. This is the point at which the locust should show up on our sensors as it would have the same presence or size as the atlas out at one kilometer, and therefore go over the threshold of a positive contact. This standard of an atlas at one kilometer is just an example starting point. You could base the system on tonnage instead of physical size, or a camel rating system like World of Tanks. There are several benefits to handling spotting in this way. It gives a boost to lighter mechs, giving them more ability to move around and poke without popping up on enemy radar and conversely could be a slight nerf to larger mechs, allowing them to be spotted out at a range much further than normal. This could help even out the costs and benefits of running mechs of various weight classes. Are you wanting the firepower and armor of a heavy or assault? You are paying the cost of being easier to spot, while pilots of lights and mediums are enjoying the benefits of more stealth for the cost of provincial pause base and durability. It allows for the differentiation of mechs on another factor, Stealth. No longer would the ECM carriers, which are only on certain chassis and variants, be the only stealthy mechs. A higher stealth value could be given to mechs that are weaker in combat to other mechs within their weight class. For example, the Cicada could be given a value closer to that of a light, giving IS medium players a sneaky option. It gives benefits to sensor range boosting items. With a default distance of 800 meters on sensor range, you can easily target any enemy within the average engagement range of 200 to 600 meters. There's basically no point in taking radar increasing items and modules as fights occurring at 800 plus are very rare. The only piece of equipment even considered is BAP, and it is really only used for its ECM countering ability. Under this system, the distance to target an enemy could range from 300 to 1000 meters, so buffing your ability to target enemies within your effective firing range could be very useful for ensuring you are able to collect their armor and loadout status information. It would allow for the inclusion of future technology such as stealth armor. Players would already be used to variable detection ranges and see the benefit that stealth armor could provide. You can create a kind of pseudo-ECM by buffering your targeting distance greatly with multiple pieces of equipment, allowing you to target an enemy without them being able to target you back, giving you the information advantage in that difference in targeting distance. And lastly, it promotes the use of the good old Mark I eyeball. I find far too many pilots are entirely relying on their sensors to spot enemies, 
and a variable system would reward manual spotting skill better than the current system. Now we can talk about how ECM would fit in this new picture with variable detection ranges. The current system provides sensor cloaking down to one quarter of the typical value, 200 meters instead of 800. There are problems with this. I believe the drop from 800 to 200 is far too big of a jump. This makes the absence and presence of ECM feel far too feast or famine. If the enemy has good ECM coverage, you are receiving next to no targeting information until the enemy is right on top of you. But without it, all mechs are easily spotted out to max range. For ECM, I would change it from one quarter of the fixed detection range of 800 to one half of the new variable detection range. For example, our atlas that is visible at one kilometer away would instead show up on 500 meters if it was under ECM. And a Raven 3L that, say, normally would be detected at 400 would show up at 200 meters under ECM. Under the new targeting systems, lights would already be fairly sneaky. So having the detection range isn't much of a benefit to them personally. However, it does promote team play, as ECM lights would be more inclined to stay with the heavies and assaults providing cover instead of needing to go with the other lights to ensure they do not get spotted as they would already have enough baseline stealth. However, when an ECM covered mech does show up on sensors, there would be some significant changes to what information was available from your sensor contact. I would like to introduce the idea of a partial contact. When you have a partial contact, you get two things, the red targeting square around your enemy and the ability to lock on tracking missiles. You would not get any of the other information that comes with a normal contact such as enemy's health, letter designation, distance, mech variant, or pilot name. Also, you would not be able to share your missile locks with your allies. Missile locks on partial contacts would require line of sight from the missile launcher. ECM coverage would still be very strong, but not overwhelming. It would refocus on the idea of denying information from your enemies, specifically damage status and letter designations, which are the most important part of communicating the enemy's weaknesses to your teammates. It wouldn't invalidate an entire weapon system type. While people may call LRMs easy mode, in the current environment of radar deprivation and mass ECM, they are extremely hard to play effectively. With the new partial contact system, the LRM carrier can be effective against ECM opponents if the pilot is willing and able to poke his head out and get his own locks. This is good counterplay. You could leave all the current ECM countermeasures where they are for now and see how they work with the new system. Then in the future, balance them accordingly. Thanks for listening, and good hunting.